How's it going everybody? Hope you're all doing well. So talking about camp security, regardless whatever camp it may be, if it's your bug out camp or your get home camp or Minuteman kit because it's, you know, Red Dawn happened and you're fighting an opposition or something like that, but you want to be notified if threats or, you know, other people or even large predators are coming into your camp. How do you do that properly? Well, I can show you one of the methods that I specifically use and others that I am aware of have used in the past and everything. But mainly the ones that I use currently are by Fifth Ops and they use a simple 209 primer and mainly Kevlar. And it's just this small device that you can just unscrew and put a 209 you know, primer into to prime it. And then it's pretty much a trip wire. Now, this is spring loaded at the top you would mount this into some kind of tree or media or other stuff like that. And then you can set it up along avenues of approach or likely locations that you suspect people will walk into your camp. So if my camp was back behind us, as you can see, this small older creek bed would be fairly accessible and easy to come through, especially at night, because at the same time, if you knew I was here, and you wanted to get into my camp without being heard or saw, you're going to pick probably an easy route not to be breaking through branches and being all loud. So you're gonna take the time to go through, you know, something easier, but you're gonna go slow. Even if you had night vision or thermal on, it's still difficult to traverse through a bunch of branches. And especially even during the day, I don't know if you can see that, but this, I already set one up. Right here is a Kevlar line, is what I specifically use, and it's strung all the way across here. So it's fairly hard to see. It, during the day, just you walking, it would be extremely difficult to see that line, mainly because it's green coated and it's super thin, but it's Kevlar, so it's extremely, you know, durable. So I'm gonna go over top of this and I'm just gonna walk out and then walk back real quick and just walk into it and show you what I mean. You'll probably be able to hear the snap and everything. It'll probably be crazy loud for me, but not too loud for y'all because I'm wearing a lapel mic, but something easy and simple as this setup. So let me get on the other side and then I'll show you me literally walking through it and you can kind of get the understanding of what it is. All right. so. I'm set up in my likely avenue of approach where I suspect people are gonna be coming in from. And even in a daylight scenario like this, I cannot see that line. I, I can see the device itself, but if you put it on the backside of the tree, definitely not gonna see it. I did this for demonstration purposes so y'all could see, I'll run some B-roll of it so you can see where it is. But me walking through here, which is likely avenue because it's difficult to get on that side, lots of trees and shrubs that I'm gonna give auditory based my position away if I walk through there. This one is fairly easy to walk through, especially walking up right about there. If I'm really looking for it, I can kind of see it, but ultimately I can't. So if I were just to walk through this, extremely loud, as you can hear that, that was, I don't know if the audio or the mic itself specifically picked it up, but for me, I mean, I could hear that 200 yards away, easy. Even next to this creek, I can hear that. So that can give you standoff distance too. So if you have your sight and you give it 150 yards and set one up there, if you hear that pop off on your right-hand side, you're like, hey, cool, okay, we got about, you know, I don't know, a minute and a half to get up and get out. So gives you some time to pack your stuff and roll, especially if you have site security and stuff like that, setting up your site like, hey, I need you guys watch this, flip down your nod, start looking around. Okay, something just came through there, let's bug out, we're out. Pack up your stuff, let's roll. Something like that, early warning devices are very helpful and key to that. So I'll probably give you a show, uh, close up of specifically how to do it and then, you know, close it out from there. So. 
fairly simple device honestly you can just screw it into a tree if you prefer and that small little hole especially to this pine is not going to damage it or anything like that it's used to having small little holes the sap's going to immediately seal up around it granted other trees if you're worried about it it can have some repercussions but it's simple kind of construction is you just pull it apart so this is obviously used and you have your two different parts so your 209 primer specifically goes in here if it's focusing which this one's already spent so we'll pick that up and put it in my pocket and you can put another one inside and it fits right up through that little eye hole you just fit there and then you can screw it on so if you'd like, they make another safety mechanism too. You can put two of these and put another one through the bottom. So if you do have it loaded and you're worried about it going off and harming your fingers and stuff, which is a possibility, or your ears, you can do another safety. But in essence, if you just pull this, you can see how it works. This is spring and it slaps down on that and pow, goes off. So to arm it, if you want, you can put your safety through there, which I'm not gonna do because it's not loaded, but you just pull this all the way up. And however more difficult, because you can push this through even further, if you want it more difficult to pull out or even easier, you can like kind of prime it just so it's barely, like it'll just pop out real easily, just like whoop, like that. But that's up to you if you wanna go down that route. It's fairly easy to set up, but grand scheme, it is time consuming. You're gonna have to take the time to put this somewhere and run your line. And then in the morning, send someone out that remembers where they are to come, come back, right? Grab it, pull up on it, deactivate it, take it out, put it away. Now it doesn't take too much time, but in the grand scheme of stuff, yes, it will take time to do this. So let's just pull it back down off of there because I don't need it anymore. simple as that and then we're gonna go wrap up the Kevlar real quick so we can reuse it and this is a good way to do it is if you just wrap it several times around the tree so therefore you don't have to cut your line and you can just wrap it and then go back around back and forth with it so the tree bark is gonna offer enough resistance to it and it just depends on how you wrap it. And as I said, if you do want to cut this, it is going to be easier, but you can actually just wrap it right back up inside itself. That's what it's designed to do. All right, so if you guys are interested in this stuff, I'll definitely leave the links in my description box below. First off, I don't get any money from this. If you purchase this stuff, I, I don't get anything. Unless they're on Amazon and I give you the link, then maybe I get a few cents. But the company has no idea that I'm talking about it or even utilizing it. So I, I don't, I'm not affiliated with them at all. It's just an option that I utilize. It is time consuming to use this product. But if your security is more important than your timeliness, maybe because you're set at a camp, rather than moving all the time, then it might be beneficial to you. Just look into the reasons why you're gonna go with it. They make other ones out on the market too, like the audible ones, the buzzers and stuff like that. But I tend to stay away from them, mainly because they're battery. Battery's gonna run out, doesn't work in all adverse conditions, and it constantly sirens until you turn it off. So it kind of can give your position away in essence. But, but that's just me, that's what I prefer. So if you guys like this kind of stuff, definitely like, subscribe it massively helps out if you just do those two things or even a comment helps the YouTube algorithm out quite a bit. If you want to go even a step further and help contribute, we have PayPal donations and then also Patreon if you're interested in getting behind the scenes content and like all the newer stuff and things that'll never make it to YouTube, I share with my Patreon folks and whatnot and I like having a good relationship with them. I bounce ideas off of them all the time and just show them behind the scenes, family, that kind of stuff, like what's going on, how does this whole YouTube thing work, just other stuff like that. So consider it. If not, keep enjoying the free content. So other than that, I hope you all have a great day.